Well, that's a blast from the past, isn't it? The Hantec 1008. Right, so uh, on the screen here, guys, you can see I've just got a wee digital pulse train in and around uh, five volts uh, peak uh, at a frequency of about 25 hertz. None of that actually matters. Uh, this particular uh, setup is only a make a point about um, what Hantech strangely terms the acquisition mode. Right? So what is acquisition mode? In more standard parlance uh, terminology, is the trigger mode of the scope, yeah? And um, the reason I'm making this wee video, guys, is really for no other reason that, to me, trigger is grossly under-discussed uh, when it comes to uh, introducing scope functions to uh, newbies, right? Somebody who's new in scope, and I'm still relatively new. I don't use the scope that much. I've only had one for a couple of years, I guess it's been, but it's interesting stuff, you know? So everybody knows that the, the, the 1008 is painfully slow. So you can see the the, the data train there is uh, marching across the, or the pulse train is marching across the screen to some degree, which can be annoying, you know, if you're, if you're trying to look at it. So this is where the trigger actually comes in handy. You can uh, set the trigger and basically the trigger is uh, allowing you to set um, thresholds. There's the trigger marker there. No, oh, it's not too clear there, guys, but you can see the little T. And there's another sub-trigger there. This one acts on the uh, Y axis, this on the X axis, of course. And if you forget which is the X and the Y, it's easy to forget, you know. And l listen, I'm no expert on any of this, guys. And, I, and sometimes it's an I find it annoying when people start using geek terminology. Listen, most, most guys that have this level scope are obviously new. They just want to know some basic functions. They don't want to get lost in the terminology. So I'll, I'll try and just keep it basic, you know. They So if you get, if guys are using X and Y axis and you forget which is which, if you keep in mind that X as in across an X, simple. That's the one that goes across, right? And then the other one, the vertical scale is obviously Y. Well, at least that's how I remember it. But in any case, back to the, 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 the pulse train here that's moving across the screen. So it'd be nice if we can stabilize it and we can do so using the, uh, the trigger, as I said. So you'll notice that right now, uh, the trigger function, um, the acquisition mode, uh, you've got three options, auto, normal, or a single. So let's take a wee minute to discuss those. So some scopes actually have the option for none, no trigger at all. Uh, the problem with that is of course, and again, especially for new users to scopes, uh, quite often you can set scope up expecting to see something and you'll get absolutely nothing. So what the all function does in simplified terms is just paint the trace no matter what, right? No matter what kind of mess you're gonna have on the screen is gonna give you the trace. And I've set this up in auto um, for this reason. Uh, but you'll notice it is marching across the screen. So even in the auto function here, the, the, the trigger marker is still actually operational. So you'll notice when I drop the X trigger below where the threshold actually is. Another thing you can keep in mind guys if you forget what the trigger function is all about, if you if you keep in mind that the trigger and threshold are closely related uh, to each other, so the T stands for threshold as well as trigger in my mind, that when the signal crosses that threshold or trigger point that it will actually um, start painting the image um, in a stable manner from that point. So you'll notice now that the trigger, the, the pulse train is no longer marching across the screen when it crosses both this point and um, the timeline trigger, the time base trigger up here, that it starts painting the image here and it does so every time it crosses those markers. That makes some sense? So even in the all function, the trigger marker is still has a utility so let's see if we can make a distinction now between the auto and the normal okay so i've just selected the normal mode there on the trigger aka acquisition mode in hand tech terms so no change really right or is there a change 
Well, there's another thing here you need to keep note of here, guys, right? You'll notice that, see that there where it says triggered? That's saying that the trigger function is sensing a trigger, which would make sense because we're crossing both trigger points there, yeah? So that's what that little enunciator there is actually telling you. And you'll also notice that up here, it shows you where the trigger point is relative to the entire screen. And then there's also um, some other details here regarding the trigger. It's actually triggered on channel one. I only have one channel operative here. And as far as the amplitude is concerned, it has to cross that level there and it is on the leading edge of the pulse train. So it would be right there when it crosses basically that point right there, right? So where it intersects the X and Y trigger points on the leading edge we're at 4.14 volts, it's gonna draw the image. So let's see what happens here if I take this. Now you'll notice that the trigger point is beyond where the pulse train maximum amplitude actually reaches and it says wait. So you might look at this again especially as a, a newbie user and you might think to yourself well I've got my pulse train everything's fine right you know that particular output is outputting uh, normally that's fine. There's nothing happening here. Look I can actually go to the output here. I can lift this. This is the output that's actually drawing that trace on screen. Right? Is disconnected and my trace is still there so what's the deal with that what's happening there well in a normal trigger mode right it's going to hold that last trace that it just saw that's why it says wait is waiting for another trigger in order to cross that threshold which is now out of the out of the reach of the pulse train that we actually have right at this setup and you don't have any output you could potentially not have any output we do we have an output which is below the trigger point but we could disconnect it as i just clearly showed you and you'd be none the wiser it would still say wait and the trace would still be drawn as as the same thing so be clear on what mode of trigger you're actually using guys it's critical that you realize there's a big difference here right a big difference so <clears throat> Let me transition back to uh, let me transition back to the auto mode here for a moment. Trigger mode tells you it's in auto, so it's going to show you an active trace. You can see it's no longer stable on the screen because we're below the trigger point, even though it's in auto, as I mentioned before there, right? So what could have been happening in the previous mode there when we were in in normal just just for the sake of demonstration purposes, I can alter the amplitude of the pulse, trace here, uh, pulse train here. This could have been happening, right? You know, the pulse train could have been all over the place as far as its amplitude was concerned. And you would have been none the wiser because it would have been stuck in the normal mode of operation with respect to the trigger. In fact, let me cross the trigger point now. Let me go back to normal. Let me go back to normal here on the trigger. And maybe I can make the point a little clearer. Okay. So there we're seeing an active trigger. And let me adjust the amplitude there. And again, you can see what's happening, right? So I can swing the amplitude up and down. So as long as it crosses that trigger point, we're good. We can see an active pulse train, yeah? But let me go below the, the trigger point here. Below the threshold on the uh, trigger. It's below. It's well below the uh, trigger point now. See the weight, and you'll also notice that the, uh, I have that value on there for a reason. It's no longer updating. Why is that no longer updating? Because we're not crossing the trigger or threshold point on screen. So let me go back again. Let me lift the amplitude. We'll go above the trigger, and you can see that's active. And that's active. It's telling you, triggered, 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 right? So you have an active image on screen. So this, this is a... This is a major consideration, guys, that you have to be well aware of. And again, as a newbie, it's confusing as all hell. You're highly focused on trying to get the amplitude right and the time base right. And you think, oh, and all of a sudden you don't have an image. And you're like, what the hell's happening? You know, be well aware of what trigger mode you're actually in. 
and I'll just close this video by just talking about the last uh, um, acquisition mode or trigger mode if you prefer and that's the single or some of them call it a single shot or one shot depending on uh, what manufacturer of scope you're actually talking about here guys and I'll show you how that actually functions if we go a single shot let's go a single shot here let's stop the uh, actually let me let me move that let me move the actual marker just to make the point here so single shot and we're running yeah so we're in play mode if you will it's running and nothing happening we've got nothing on screen absolutely nothing it says wait so that should be a clue that you haven't been triggered right there's no trigger hence no trace okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to slowly increase the, the pulse train again until across the trigger point but i'll show you there's a distinct difference in the single or one shot mode of operation that's completely different from normal so there it is so what i've done is just quickly sweep the pulse train up till it crosses the threshold and it will snapshot and hold that image no matter what now it's going to hold that image you'll notice it says stop as opposed to wait it's not looking for another trigger now because we're in single mode trigger and it has actually snapshotted that this is a fantastic function to make use of guys to utilize and i've made a point about this in a, vid in a video in the past uh i don't bother with links or anything like that anymore in previous videos nobody uses them right so we kind of a waste of time go looking for it if you're interested but the single shot especially on uh, a scope or the software that has virtually no memory like the uh, 1008 this is a great function to utilize where you can have data running for a long long period of time and then if it goes high or low on you of course you can use the function below the line or where whatever threshold you would like it to set um, it will snapshot this data and hold it there this is a great function very very um, offers a great deal of utility again especially in scopes where you can't sweep through the memory buffer and actually take a look at uh, long timelines so I'll leave it at that guys this is uh, 12 and a half minutes um, maybe a wee bit longer than anticipated but I hope I made the uh, the modes of operation here again hand tech uses it calls it acquisition mode it's really the trigger function um, it can be altered again if you're using the hand tech by going into um, setup trigger and then you can select um, obviously you have to be triggering off the respective channel um, in this case it's channel one I only have one channel for demonstration purposes and there's a few other kind of self-explanatory uh, settings there that you can actually set up as well with respect to where and how it triggers yeah so i'll i've thrown down for long enough guys um yeah that'll that'll do for now i think so be well aware what mode you're in realize what the um i should have i should have spent a wee bit of time on the uh the horizontal trigger here it just displaces on the uh, on the time base where the trigger point actually is this is obviously in the center point right so when it crosses again when it crosses both of these points that's when the wave will, will start to be drawn. So that's why in this case, as soon as the wave uh, crossed that point there, where the, where the X and the Y trigger points actually are referenced, then it snapshotted because we were in this single mode of operation. Yeah, so anyway, I've dragged this out even longer. I think that's long enough, guys. Uh, I know there's not too many t guys out there that still use the Hantec uh, 1008, but I'm pretty sure there'll be a few it's kind of a classic scope yeah it's the pong of uh <laughs> dso scopes i think but um i still like it i think i still think it's pretty good especially if you use it in fact let me let me jump cut just for just one second i want to use uh, it'd be certainly nice if every software had a warning flag that came up and told you uh, you can't miss this right so this is a h scope that some of you guys are aware of that can be used with multiple lower end scopes including the uh, Hantec uh, 1008 um, that if this warning flag popped up telling you you don't have the trigger set properly right so in this case um, it's off screen right and then you think Jesus what's happening what, what have I done here but um, H scope does a particularly nice job of telling you 
is waiting for a trigger with that warning flag. So uh, anyway, just a, a shout out to the H Gop and it's, it's a nice rig. There's no doubt about that. So that's it, boys. I'll leave it at that. I hope that made some sense for some of you. Cheers.